Let's have a classic thread, in which we share our unsettling, creepy, or paranormal experiences in green text format. This is a long story, with a lot of build-up and not much payoff. Take it as you will. The year is 2011. I'm 13 years old at the time. This was a particularly unpleasant point in my life. My family had always been poor, but the 2009 recession had created lasting effects that had rendered our situation even worse than usual. We frequently had to rely on relatives to pay bills that we could not pay on time, but that obviously was not a consistently reliable method. Many times we'd barely have enough food to feed everyone, and I recall frequently going to bed hungry. At one point we couldn't afford to pay the electric bill, and we had to go without electricity for a week. We had to remove all of our frozen and refrigerated food from the fridge slash freezer and store it over at my grandmother's. Then, of course, there was myself. I had hit puberty at about the age of 10, which was sooner than most of my classmates. As a result, I looked distinctly older than the rest of them. Rather than serving as an advantage, it was simply another thing which made me a target for harassment. I was riddled with acne and was very hairy. I was frequently referred to as Bigfoot by other kids. And if this wasn't enough, my transition into puberty had triggered a behavioral change, which I would go on to understand was a mental illness, obsessive compulsive disorder. If you've ever been around someone that has actually been diagnosed with OCD, not people that call themselves OCD because they have charming quirks like organizing their bookshelves or something stupid, you'll know that the obsessive compulsions of these individuals can border on the insane. When you wash your hands so frequently that they become dry, chipped, and bleeding, it's just another target on your back. Now before you bail, I want you to realize that there is a reason I'm going into detail about this. I'm going to go ahead and move away from the green text format, as I realized it probably is not the most efficient way to tell a relatively long story like this. Anyways, I've come to believe that what soon transpired was not necessarily rooted in my life circumstances at the time, but how bleak of an outlook I had. I was extremely depressed and suicidal, far more than what a 13-year-old reasonably should be. I wish to paint a picture of my circumstances to give you an idea of why I was so distressed at the time. Someone that age is not properly equipped to handle these kinds of issues, and having OCD itself amplifies the stress of them. Having OCD essentially makes it extremely difficult to turn off any worries or anxieties that you have about virtually anything. Most people can reasonably regulate their anxieties and direct their attention elsewhere. In the case of someone with OCD, they instead dwell on them to an unhealthy degree and become compelled to channel these anxieties through rituals that ease them. For example, feeling an indiscriminate sense of contamination, despite logically knowing that not to be the case, so you wash your hands repeatedly to ease that feeling. I am, of course, an adult now. I take medication and have acquired coping mechanisms to reduce the severity of this mental illness. However, at the age of 13, it was particularly severe, and I didn't even understand why this was happening to me. With all this in mind, the actual story starts around September of 2011. I can't recall exactly why, but I had made the decision to go on a walk by myself that day. I've never been particularly fond of arbitrary walks unless I'm with someone else, so I was probably just bored. I recall that I was feeling particularly depressed that day, not for any specific reason, but just a general sense of sadness and anxiety created by the accumulated issues I was dealing with at the time. I arrived at the park and decided to go down an area that was common for joggers. It was a paved road that steeped into the ground through a forested area on the outset of the park, with a moderately sized stream next to it. The path, if you follow the normal route, merely circles around and brings you to an exit on the other side of the park. I'd walked it a million times before, so it was nothing new, but there was a fork in the path that goes slightly uphill. When I arrived at this point, 
something happened. A thought in my head suddenly popped into existence, saying, If you don't follow this path, you might die. Now, every human being has irrational thoughts that merely appear without any conscious intention. But most people can put those fears to rest and tell themselves, that's utterly absurd. In my case though, as was previously established, I have OCD. I did not want to go up it and even tried to go the other way. But this general sense of anxiety and dread simply filled me. Well, what if I actually do die? I know that doesn't make sense, but it did not matter how much I consciously told myself that it was completely illogical. I could not suppress the indiscriminate feeling of anxiety. I knew that the only way to ease the feeling of anxiety was to go up the path and walk back down. So, I quickly walked back to the fork in the path and walked up the alternate path. The path itself had a relatively large house on the side of it, which was visible from the bottom of the fork. My general assumption was that it led to the house, and the house belonged to a caretaker, as there were various animals and such in a large fenced area in the middle of the path below. As I suspected, the path simply dissipated and ended at a gate which led to the front door of the house. At this point, I was going to go back down, but then I again began to dwell on something completely arbitrary and absurd. Wait, the path itself doesn't have an exit really. It simply dissipates from the gate to this house at the side. If I don't walk through the forested area itself, does that necessarily count? Yet again, I had this indiscriminate sense of dread yet again, and the only way to soothe it in my mind was to follow some arbitrary ritual. It's virtually impossible to explain the reasoning itself or the feeling, but I had somehow crafted this idea in my head that you have to walk through the forested area until you reach the edge, then walk back and count in your head the number of seconds it takes to get to the other end and back, but starting at the beginning of the fork in the road and ending at it. So, illogically abiding by this arbitrary ritual in order to ease the sense of dread, I walked back down to the beginning of the path where it forks off, and then started walking up again, counting in my head. I, of course, could not tell that the forested area didn't extend for miles, as the trees were spaced out enough and the entirety of the area was small enough that I somewhat make out an area on the other side, which was plain grass. So, I began to walk up the path, and then into the forested area, counting the number of seconds it took me to get to the end of the forested area, and back down to the beginning of the forked path. If I messed up my counting or got off track, I would feel compelled to go back and start over. That's the nature of these kinds of rituals. As such, I was extremely focused on making sure I counted properly. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and so on in that fashion. If it sounds tedious and exhausting to you, that's because it is. But my ability to keep myself from doing this was nearly impossible. Even in situations where it would seem inappropriate or disruptive to engage in rituals like this, I have difficulty preventing myself from doing them. Eventually, I got to the other end of the forested area, which took approximately 478 seconds to get to by my count, or 7.9 minutes and saw a fairly large field of plain grass, which clearly expanded outside the city limits. It wasn't something profoundly unique to see in Kansas, which is where all of this takes place if I had not mentioned that before. But I, of course, didn't want to stop moving, even for a moment, as I was of course compelled to immediately turn back and walk to the other end while continuing to count. As I was about to do this, however, I saw something out of the corner of my eye that made me quickly turn my head to look back at it. The only time that I can reasonably put a halt to these rituals that I feel compelled to engage in is when I am in situations that are serious or startling enough to make my mind prioritize a situation, which as I've previously established is still difficult. However, in this large field of plain grass, I could see at the edge of my vision 
placed roughly in the middle of this flat field, a figure of some kind. I could barely make it out, but it was definitely human-shaped. The issue here was that it was a solidly black figure. I mean solid darkness here. It looked like a black hole had taken the shape of a human. And there it stood, simply staring at me, as best as I could tell. I felt, in that moment, an extreme sense of dread. Not the kind, like with my OCD, I had mentioned before, which was just some kind of indiscriminate feeling with no source to it. The dread I felt at this moment was focused entirely on that figure, and I could feel it in the pit of my stomach. I can't emphasize how clearly unnatural that figure was. No matter how you looked at it, it made absolutely no logical sense for something to look like. You'd probably assume, oh, it's just someone wearing a skin-type black suit or something in the middle of a field. Creepy, sure, but not exactly paranormal. However, even the darkest, skin-tight suit would have physical indications of what it is. This was not the case here. It was like something had cut a hole in the fabric of reality itself. I simply stood there and stared at this figure for a solid 30 seconds or so. I can't explain exactly why, but I had this incredibly bad feeling that if I made any kind of sudden movements, that something was going to happen. And every possible signal in my body was telling me that there was nothing but danger emanating from this figure. Then, in a manner which seemed more akin to something imitating human movement, it slowly moved its arm, and I mean slowly. It took at least 10 seconds for it to make a full movement, and I simply watched, ready to make a sprint in the opposite direction at any moment, but still not wanting to make any sudden movement. As the figure raised its arm above its head, I realized what it was doing. It was waving, slowly and unnaturally, directly at me. I can't explain the kind of terror I felt in every fiber of my being at that moment. I was on the verge of tears, ready to cry and scream, only being held back by the greater fear of the consequences of doing so. Finally, it was finished waving, and then it disappeared. That sounds strange, right? It disappeared? I don't mean that it slowly faded away, or shrunk, or any number of ways you would imagine something like that in your head going down. I mean, it was there, and then in an instant, it was not. It was like it had been simply deleted from existence. The exact second it registered in my head that this thing wasn't in my line of sight anymore, my feelings were not of relief, but of terror at the thought I no longer had sight of something, which I felt nothing but danger from. I immediately sprinted back as fast as I possibly could. You've probably heard of the concept of hysterical strength. When people get an adrenaline boost and perform near superhuman feats when they're in dangerous situations. I swear, I became an Olympic runner for a short time. I ran faster than I can ever remember running in my entire life jumping over and dodging every possible obstacle. I made it back down the path and ran back to the beginning of the entire path until I could see the park and the people there at the park. I did not feel the slightest sense of relief until I saw other human beings, and I collapsed. I sat there and caught my breath for a good three or four minutes and then walked into a nearby bathroom. I made sure there was no one else in there, and I walked into one of the stalls and vomited up everything in my stomach, sobbing and shaking. I don't care if you think this was an overreaction. Whatever the figure I saw was, it was not benevolent or easily classifiable under conventional standards. I was lucid at the time, and although it was relatively far away, I could very clearly see it, or rather, I couldn't see it, since it was just an entirely black void. My point is that what I saw was not merely some kind of illusion. You could make the argument that it was a hallucination, and I have no rational basis to counter against that argument. The only thing I can say is that I have experienced hallucinations before, 
and even the most vivid ones did not feel like this to me. I didn't just see this thing in broad daylight. I felt it. It was like its very presence invoked unimaginable terror. However, this was not the last time I would see it. I would go on to see it two more times, and I will tell you of them, and why I have one other good reason to believe at a personal level that it wasn't simply a hallucination. Alright, continuing from where I left off. After having vomited in and cried for several minutes in the bathroom at the park, I got a hold of myself enough to clean up and walk back home. I was a fucking wreck the entire time though. I was still on the verge of tears and kept looking over my shoulder the entire time, expecting to see that figure again. I didn't know, and I wouldn't for a while. Roughly a month went by, and although I was dramatically more jittery and startled, I tried to simply go about my life on a regular basis. Of course, regular in the sense that I was, as mentioned in the beginning of my story, a poverty-stricken one in which I dealt with OCD and was harassed by classmates at school. I obviously had some friends, and there was of course my family as well, but I didn't tell them about what happened, simply because I knew there wasn't any reason for them to believe me. Indeed, I even tried to rationalize it myself. I knew that it made absolutely no sense, and it still doesn't, but I could not get over the absolute realness and vividness of it, and for someone with OCD, that dwells on even the most minor of things. It plagued every second of every day for me. I tried desperately to convince myself that it was not real and that it had to have been a hallucination, but I didn't really believe that. Then, one evening, I was just watching TV and trying to take my mind away from everything. I recall that I was watching Futurama at the time, specifically the episode where Bender has his exchange. In the middle of the episode, the cable suddenly went out. My other family members were already asleep, so they didn't notice. For a moment, I simply believed it had to have been a storm, but before I could even look out the window, I felt chills run down my spine, and my stomach sunk yet again. I had this indescribable feeling of terror, exactly like the time before. It was stronger this time, however. It was like someone was projecting thoughts of unimaginable horror into my head. I instinctively knew what it was, and like last time, I had an intuitive understanding of what I needed to do. I pulled the blind back, just enough for me to look out the window. And there it was. The same, dark, humanoid figure. Utterly black and devoid of any light. It was right across the street, standing beneath a streetlight as if to deliberately draw attention to how unnatural it looked, so as to dispel any potential suspicions within me about its nature. This time I could make out more than just the fact that it was like a humanoid hole in the fabric of reality. I could make out certain details about its silhouette. For starters, I could tell that it had the figure of a woman. From the appearance of the silhouette, it seemed to have mid-shoulder length hair, and was probably about 5 foot to 5 foot 6 in height. Just like last time, I merely stared at it, afraid to do anything else. I realized that the intensity of my terror was amplified, as if being physically closer in proximity to it was making it worse. I'm not entirely sure how to describe the feeling. It wasn't just like a feeling of terror. It was like feeling devoid of any kind of happiness or hope in any way. I felt unable to even recall happy or pleasant thoughts. It was like the only thing that existed in that moment was despair, suffering, and terror. Just like last time, it slowly raised its arm and waved at me in an extremely inhuman manner. And just like last time, it merely stopped being there. It was there in one instant and was no longer there the next. The moment it was gone, the cable on my TV suddenly returned to normal, and rather than freaking out, I simply sat back down on my bed and turned off the TV. I was terrified, exactly like last time, but I didn't even know how to process it. 
I simply stared blankly into space and felt entirely unable to do anything. The only thing that was going through my mind at the time were thoughts of death and suffering, simply flashing by without any context or reason, adding to this sense of despair and terror. Remember, I was still 13 at the time, an age where individuals are struggling merely to make sense of reality and the world around them. They're just starting to think abstractly and formulate personal beliefs and opinions. How does someone that young deal with something like this? How do you even begin to make sense of it? Well, I didn't. I didn't know what to think. I was not raised to be religious, and at this time, I had developed an agnostic view of the world, despite being young, but it wasn't a very well thought out position, either. It was more or less the kind of view you'd expect of a teenager, just coming to grips with the concept of a belief to possess. Either way, that night, before I went to bed, I chanted a short and desperate plea, a prayer, if you'd like to call it that, to anything in the universe that might hear it and have some control over reality. I repeated, in my head, this statement. Please, don't make me see that thing again. A simple request, but it invokes the feelings I had at the time. I had absolutely no interest in that thing. I didn't care what it was or what it wanted. It didn't even matter to me if it was real or simply something in my mind. I knew that I had no desire to see it again, because I was terrified of what would happen if I did. Unfortunately, as I have already stated, I did see it again. One last time. Like I already said, I would eventually see that figure one last time, but it wouldn't be for another year. During that time, I thought I had rid myself of whatever it was. I managed to simply stop thinking about it, and during this time, my life was starting to gradually improve a bit. I still lived in poverty, but we were managing. I still had OCD, but I was medicated and slowly improving. I still got messed with by other people in my school, but they were starting to back off. It wasn't like things had made a complete 180 or something, but they were better. During this time, I had befriended and gotten close to a classmate that lived under similar circumstances and was honestly in a worse situation. He wasn't just poor, he was about to go homeless poor. He was severely bipolar, bullied even more than I myself, and though I never knew for sure, I suspected that he was being abused. Well, one weekend, I decided to have him stay the night. We didn't do much. We simply hung out and played some video games, watched some TV. Exactly the kind of thing you'd expect two teenage boys to do. Eventually, we both got tired and decided to go to sleep. That night, I started off with a relatively normal dream. I can't quite recall what it was about, but it had something to do with school. What I do remember, however, was the dream quickly taking a nightmarish turn for the worst. It suddenly turned into an incoherent stream of sounds and images straight out of hell. It was so incredibly vivid, unintelligible screams and cries, all of them sounding as if they were being tortured in the most gruesome manner possible. Images of people dying and being tortured accompanied by screams. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that these images flashing through my dream were so vivid and real that it was as if I was peering directly into a real life event that they were pulled from. I quickly awoke from the dream, though my eyes remained closed, almost bolted shut, but I suddenly became conscious. I did not want to open my eyes, but I knew instantly what was going on. The same feeling of terror and dread washed over me yet again, still as familiar, but it was even more potent. So much so, it was like I was suffocating. I slowly opened my eyes, and in the barely lit room, I could still make out exactly what it was. Standing at the end of my bed, right in front of me, was the pitch black figure from before. Its silhouette hadn't seemed to change in any way, and it remained as dark, devoid of any conceivable light or color like a black hole. It merely stood there, 
as it had done the previous two times. However, with it this close, I noticed something even more striking about it. It contrasted near perfectly with its surroundings, by which I meant that its darkness didn't obscure anything around it. It was as if it was a normal human that simply had its image photoshopped out of existence. I realized something else too, something which I had realized was true in both instances before. As it stood there, a light from a car passing by outside shone through the blinds on the windows, and as it passed over, I realized that the light wasn't sucked up into its body, but reflected off of it like a physical thing. It's hard to convey how this looked. Remember how I said before that it looked like a chunk of reality had simply been removed from existence? That remained true, so you would not expect light to illuminate it, but merely be sucked up into it. That's what was so striking though. It looks like if I were to touch it, I would fall into an endless void, but the light that illuminates it does not really illuminate it so much as it appears to be bending around a space that doesn't even exist. I truly can't fully describe how this looked, and it had only become apparent to me when it was this close. That wasn't the only thing I had noticed, either. The silhouette, as I had mentioned before, was clearly of a female. But as strange as it sounds, she had a perfect and angelic figure. I don't mean that in a sexual way. I couldn't even begin to think of this thing in a sexual manner. But what I mean is that the silhouette conveyed a figure of a woman that was clearly in the nude, but her figure looked as if it had been crafted to perfection. If there was a perfect specimen of a woman, this thing's figure would be it. What I'm trying to get at is that up close like this, its overworldliness was made all the more apparent. I was still terrified. In fact, I would say that at the moment, I was filled with more fear dread and sadness than I have ever felt in my life. However, I think I was beginning to understand something about it. Whatever it was, it was in agony. In contrast to the previous two times I had seen it, I realized that it was inherently malicious for some reason. It brought me nothing but feelings of terror and suffering, but I realized that it was not intentional. Maybe that's why it seemed to stand there for so much longer than it had the previous two times, and I merely stared back at it, never looking away for even an instant. This time though, it did something entirely different before it disappeared. It looked down at my friend, still asleep, and stared at him, and then it disappeared in the same manner as before, merely being there in one instant, and then not in the next. At the time, I had no idea what it meant. I did not sleep the rest of the night. I simply laid there and stared at the ceiling. I should have been concerned for my friend, but I felt so overwhelmed that I felt as if I could only think of death. Not the act of dying or being killed, but merely death as a state of being. Non-existence. I was still young at the time, and I felt like I had truly come to understand the notion of non-existence at that moment and it was overwhelming. And the next day, my friend awoke, seemingly unaware of what had happened. I was not very chatty, so he left pretty quickly. I now realize that he probably thought I was upset with him for some reason. Nothing very eventful happened for a while, until about a week later. I was walking home from school, and as I came down a long stretch of road, I saw my friend, right at the corner, staring down at the other end at something. I looked at the other end and didn't see anything, but when I looked back at him, I realized that his face was covered in sweat and he looked like he was about to puke. I called out to him, startling him so much that he fell backwards. I walked up to him as he got up and without even thinking, I asked him in as calm of a voice as possible, did you see it? My tone was one that made it apparent that I had not seen it right there with him, but that I had seen it before, and was confirming whether or not he had the same experience. 
Of course, I don't need to explain what it was. He didn't answer my question though. He just looked at me with the most startled face I've ever seen and he walked away. I'm not sure why I didn't try to do or say anything because that was the last time I ever saw him. About a week later, he went missing. That is, he disappeared. His room hadn't been broken into and it was locked from the inside, as was his window. None of his belongings, except the clothes he wore to bed, were gone, and there was no indication whatsoever that anything had even happened to him. No signs of a struggle, no indication that he intended to run away. He simply went to bed that night, as purported by his family members, and the next morning, he was gone without a single trace. I mentioned earlier that I had suspected that he was being abused, and I would have assumed that one of his family members had done something to him, if I didn't already know what happened. Well, that's incorrect. I actually had no idea where he went or what happened to him. I simply knew that whatever it was, it had something to do with that figure. I don't really know what it was, but I've come to believe that it attaches itself to certain individuals based upon their emotional state. I don't think it was a coincidence that I initially ran into it while performing a kind of ritual caused by my OCD, an issue that was causing me great distress. It appeared to me twice while I was at my worst, and one last time while at a point where my life was gradually improving. Since that point, I've had points in my life where things got shitty and I got depressed, but it has not appeared again, and I don't know if it ever will. I honestly don't know why my friend disappeared. I can only guess that he did something wrong, or maybe he didn't. Maybe I simply got lucky, and the figure decided not to take me. I mentioned before that the last time I saw it, it seemed to be in agony, and I didn't get the impression that it was inherently malicious. I still hold that to be true, but it does not mean I had any idea of its motivations. All I can say is that at the very least, it seems to believe that it's doing something kind, but I'm not even sure if it's aware of the terror it causes. Whatever it was, I do not expect to see it again, and if I do, then maybe I'll find out something more about it, or maybe I'll end up just like my friend. I try not to think about it though. Really, I've just learned to live my life out while I can, because regardless of what this thing was or is, Eventually, I'll disappear too. So that's the end. I don't really have anything conclusive to offer to you about it all. As sad as it makes me that my friend disappeared, I'm simply happy that it wasn't me. So, do you guys have any stories to offer? Well, friends, that was um, certainly a story. As someone with OCD myself, I can, uh, I can relate to some of, some of that. Not the crazy being, but, uh, some of it. And I do agree, it's, it's kind of annoying. Not, not to be that guy, but it is kind of annoying when people are like, oh. Um, because the big thing with OCD is intrusive thoughts, and people are like, oh my god, my intrusive thoughts made me uh, buy a, a new fucking bag, I don't know. And it's like... That's, no. If you had to deal with any of the... Yeah, I'm not going to run about it, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, so my story, how do you, what do you think about the story? Um, my personal theory is that the being, um, it was in agony, right? And it was, it was desperate and it was going to get the guy, but like it saw its friend, saw the friend was in a worse state and latched onto him and said, right? So... My theory is that the being traded places, like the being, by by getting someone else who was maybe worse, in a worse state than itself, it was able to, you know, trade places and finally die or pass on or whatever. And now his friend is the being. So what if the friend is the being and it comes back for him? Damn, that's crazy. Write that. Right, that's a fucking fiddle right there. That's a guaranteed fucking Oscar for the main character. Whew. Fucking write that shit.